rapid expansion was due in large measure to men with vision, men who were not afraid to introduce new enterprises. One such man was determined to introduce the breeding and raising of thoroughbred horses to rising springs. However, but for another man, the enterprise would have failed, and the West might never have become a source of the world's great thoroughbreds. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. It generally took more than a horse to excite the enthusiasm of the good people of Rising Springs, but the horse Joe Ridgely and his daughter were leading was exceptional. And along with everybody else, I wanted to find out more about it. Hi, Doc. Good morning, Janet. Joe? Hello, Hello, Doc. What do you got here? Isn't he a beauty? Dad bought him in the East. <laughs> uh, hold it, Janet. I only bought a quarter interest in him. It's a partnership deal, Doc. Webb and Graham and Bennett each bought a quarter interest in him, too. Four of you? Must have cost a lot of money. <laughs> he sure did, $100,000. You're going to enter him in the race next week at Winton City, aren't you, Dad? That's right, Janet. It's the Western Stakes with a purse of $25,000, and Freedom's son's going to win it. Mind if I interrupt? Hello, Janet. Well, hello, Ralph. Nice to see you. Do you mind if a comparative newcomer interjects a note of business into these proceedings, Mr. Ridgely? Not at all, Mr. Courtright. Speak your piece. I couldn't help overhearing what you paid for this magnificent animal. But a racehorse like any other animal, Mr. Ridgely, is subject to injury or death. Oh. You can't argue about that. Well, all right, then. Don't you think it'd be wise to protect your investment? Sure, but how? Well, that's simple. Take out an insurance policy on it. Royal Eastern, one of the companies I represent, insures racehorses. How much would this policy cost? That would run you exactly $10,000 a year, Mr. Ridgely. $10,000? That's awful high. No, on the contrary, sir, it's very reasonable. Isn't that right, Doctor? Think of the money the insurance company would have to pay you. $100,000 if anything happened to him. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Courtright, you let me talk it over with my partners, and I'll give you an answer just as soon as I can. It's fair enough. Well, it's high time we got you out to your new home. Come on. Oh, uh, Janet. I'd like to see you soon. You're always welcome out at the ranch, Ralph. In a day or two, then? You coming, Janet? I'll be right with you, Dad. Bye. Bye, Janet. Come see me. As soon as possible. keep his appointments on time either. Here's a certificate of soundness on Freedom's son. He's in perfect health. Thank you, Doctor, but I, I'm afraid we won't need it. Well, what's the matter? Well, I told you I spent all my money on Freedom's son. My partners did the same. We can't afford the policy. Did you try to borrow it? Yep, spent all morning talking to everybody we know in Rising Springs. All we could raise was 4900 you didn't ask me. Here, I can contribute a hundred. Thanks, Doc, but what good would it do? We're still shy of 5,000. How much would it cost to insure that horse for half his value? 5,000. There you are, Joe. Insure him for 50,000 instead of a hundred. The doctor's right, Mr. Ridgely. And if anything happened to Freedom's son, you'd at least get back half your investment. Of course he's right. Scribble up that policy, Mr. Courtright. I've already done it except for the amount. You represent all your partners? The sign here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello, Miller. Courtright, what are you doing here? I figured I'd find you here, Ed. I remembered your circuit. You know, east in the summer, south in winter, west in spring. Is that your horse? Yeah, his name is Whitlow. Win any purses? Few. Good. What about you? Last I heard, the whole New York police force was after you for embezzlement. How'd you ever get out of town? Not so loud. 
I'm a respectable businessman now over in Rising Springs. You mean you've gone straight? I'm in a legitimate business. Until the district attorney in New York forgets all about me. Uh, what business you in? Insurance. That's why I looked you up. Well, you got an angle? A group of ranchers over in Rising Springs bought a horse for $100,000. Name of Freedom's son. Ever heard of him? Yeah. Yeah, he's a great horse. Well, they spent all their money buying him. And then they insured him. But all they could afford was a policy for 50000 Half of what he's worth. And they uh, bought the policy through you. Yeah. You see what I'm getting at? Knowing what was paid for the horse, the company will insure him for 100000 with no questions asked. All I have to do is write out a policy for $100,000 instead of fifty. Yeah? Well, then what? Freedom's son meets with a fatal accident. The company pays off. I pay the ranchers there $50,000. You and I split the other $50,000 between us. But won't the ranchers get a hold of a policy and find out that it's for $100,000 instead of fifty? No. I'll forge one for $50,000 and give that to them. I'm broke, Ed. You put up the $5,000 extra premium money. Seems to me I heard Freedom's son was running in the Western Stakes on Saturday. Is that true? Yeah, that's the plan. Why? Well, I've entered Whitlow here in that race. He'd take it, too, if he wasn't running against Freedom's son, and I'd win myself a $25,000 purse. I'll tell you what I'll do with you. You guarantee me that you'll kill that horse before Saturday. I'll give you the 5000 Daddy's up at the house. I came to see you. You're looking mighty pretty, as you always do. That's very flattering. It was intended to be. It's a very nice day, Janet. Would you care to go for a little ride? Well, I'd like to, Ralph, but there's Freedom Son to take care of. <laughs> he looks happy enough and hungry enough. And I, I have chores to do also. I'm sure they can wait. Come on, let's go. All right, I, I'll run up and tell Dad. Will you close the door for me? I won't be a minute. to get me. Freedom's son was sick, desperately sick. Since Doc Watkins was still out of town, she asked me to help. I only hoped we were not too late. Through, Doc. I'll do the best I can. Get me some blankets and some warm water and a long neck bottle. And hurry.
we can do for now. We'll repeat this treatment about every four hours. Where would he get poison? I wish I knew. Is this the feed bin? Yes. There's your answer. Rat poison. You must have knocked it off the medicine shelf. How could you be so callous, Janet? But I didn't, Dad. I know I didn't. But who did? You're the only one that's been near him. Courtright. Wasn't he up here this morning? Well, yes, he was, but why suspect him? He's new around here, isn't he? We don't know anything about him. Yes, but what's that got to do with it? The company he represents would have to pay out $50,000 in insurance if anything happened to Freedom's son. There's no need for an argument. Anyone could have done it, deliberately or otherwise. Yeah, you're right, Doc. I got no right to be suspicious of Cartwright. I, I'm overwrought, I guess. You better sit down, Mr. Ridgely. Yes, I, I'm tired. Of course you are, Dad. So am I. Maybe I was careless. I was deliberately trying to poison him. I think you ought to put a guard with him all the time. You ought to be watched anyway if he's sick. Dad, let me do it. I can sleep here and then I can watch him day and night. I... I don't know. I don't like the idea of you being here alone. Maybe I ought to do it. He's your doctor, Joe, and is as tired as you are. I don't recommend it. Please, Dad, let me do it. All right, Janet. All right. The next 48 hours were anxious ones for us all, as we watched for signs of Freedom Sun's reaction to the poison. The crisis had passed, and Freedom Sun slowly improved. Janet lost no time exercising the three-year-old every morning to regain his strength. Finally, two days before the big race. How's he look, Doc? Looks bright as a button to me, Joe. How's he feeling, Janet? He's full of himself. All right, pull him out. Ooh. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Janet? Hello, Courtright. I, uh, I brought you a copy of the policy, Mr. Ridgely. Oh, thanks. Freedom's son looks in fine fettle. Yeah, he is now, thanks to Doc here. Was he sick? You know, Doctor, I insured this horse on the basis of your report. If anything happened to him, I could lose my agency. Don't worry, he'll be fit enough to run the big race. We think someone tried to poison him. Poison? Who on earth would want to do that? We don't know. Anyway, Jan is staying with him day and night, so it won't happen again. Can you stay for a while, Ralph? It's almost time for lunch. There's nothing I'd like better, Janet, but I have an appointment in Winton City. Well, I'm going in there myself this afternoon. Can you wait? Gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Ridgely, but I'm late now. How about riding back together? I'm afraid that's out, too. I'm staying overnight so I can see the race officials in the morning. Oh, that's too bad. I'd have enjoyed your company. Well, I'd better be going, Janet. Doctor, Mr. Ridgely. What do you think, Doc? Yeah, uh, he's in the clear. Of course he is. The horse's stall is out that end of the barn. Are you sure Ridgely's away and the girl's alone with the horse? That's what they said. All right, this time we'll make sure the job is done right. Go on. What are you doing? What's it look like? The girl. You let her out, she'll save the horse. And you make up your mind. Which do you want, the girl or the money?
Let's get as far away from here as we can. night call when I saw the red glow in the sky. It could mean only one thing. You were locked in that barn from the outside? I know. Have any idea who did it? No, I was asleep. I hate to say this, Janet, but Courtright was the only other one besides you and I that knew that you'd be down here alone, that your father would be away. But you're wrong. I know you're wrong. Ralph couldn't do anything like that. Besides, what reason would he have? See you, Ed. Freedom's son is still alive. And Mercy's placed him under 24-hour armed guard. How the devil did that happen? I don't know, but I saw him this morning alive and kicking. Well, there's too much money at stake to give up now. Well, shoot him. Didn't you hear me? He's under armed guard. Sure, but they can't guard him while he's running in the race. We'll shoot him then. You can't do that. There'll be hundreds of people watching. We're not going to shoot him from the grandstand, you fool. There's a place under the grandstand that nobody ever uses, and it's got a clear view of the track. Maybe it'll work at that. It'll work. All the people yelling and screaming, no one will hear the shot. By the time they get to the horse and get him off the track and examine him, why, it'll give us at least an hour before they find out that it was a bullet that killed him. It was a perfect day for the big race, and people had flocked from miles around to see it. crowd were many people from Rising Springs, Cartwright and myself included. I had decided to watch him closely. I had chosen a seat above him. Janet and her dad were in the saddling paddock. The horse was safe enough there as armed guards were watching him. But as race after race was run and Cartwright stayed where he was, my attention wandered. Caught up in the excitement of a close finish in the race before the big one, I neglected to watch Cartwright for a time. With the crowd milling around, it was difficult to keep him in sight at all times. Suddenly, he was gone.
get in the home stretch, you find you're not in the lead. You go to the bat. Good luck. I don't know who you are, but I know what you've been trying to do. Now, stay where you are. Doc, we've been looking everywhere for you. Now, what's going on here? Freedom son win the race? Yes, he ran a beautiful race. These are the two men who've been trying to kill him. I just came from the sheriff's office, and he told me that Cartwright wrote that policy up for $100,000. He intended to kill Freedom's son and pay you your 50,000 and split the other 50,000 with Miller. They found the policy in Cordwright's files. And the policy for 50,000 he gave me was a forgery? That's right. But how was Miller in on the scheme? He loaned Cordwright the extra premium money. And besides, he wanted this horse out of the way so his would win the race. Yes, I see. What's Sheriff gonna do with them? Send them back east. They're wanted there for a long list of crimes. They'll be guests of Sing Sing for quite a spell. Well, good riddance to them. Uh, bring them up here, boys. Well, what do you say, Doc? Think we got a couple of more winners? I'd say so. Buy them with your winnings? Yeah, paid off our debt like you know, and bought the coast with what was left over. Thanks to you, our plan is underway. But excuse me, Doc, I gotta get them back to their mamas. I'm sorry, Janet. I guess it's a little unpleasant to find out the truth about Cordwright. I'm grateful that you did. I'm lucky to have learned what he's really like now and instead of later on. I'll see you at the ranch.
up, dude. <laughs> 